Okay, now you know structure of the message that is stored on Kafka brokers. And now it's a good time to go on and talk about uh, how topics are actually stored uh, on brokers and what is partition. So every topic may exist on different brokers that uh, are included in a Kafka cluster. For example, here on this diagram, you see that topic A is present at broker 0 and at broker 1. And topic B is present on broker 1, broker 2 and broker 3. Another topic, topic C, is present only at broker 2. Notice that on this diagram I have removed Zookeeper for simplicity, but it is always there. Without Zookeeper, Kafka Broker is not able to operate. So you may ask me a question. Why do we need the same topic on different brokers? Why don't just create a single topic per single broker? Answer is pretty simple. For fault tolerance. If in such case broker 2 will fail, all messages in topic C will be lost and no one will be able to produce new messages to topic C and consume messages from this topic, because broker that was serving all messages inside of this topic topic C is gone. In this case, when we talk about topic A, and if, for example, broker 0 fails, broker 1 will be able still save new messages that will arrive to topic A, and it will able to serve reading requests from consumers that will ask for data from this topic A. But uh, how actually messages are spread among different brokers in such case when same topic is present on different brokers? For that, Kafka uses partitions. And here in this example you see that topic A has two partitions, partition 0 and partition 1. One partition is located at broker 0 and the second one is located at broker 1. If we will talk about topic B, it has in this example three partitions, starting from partition number 0. So this partition is located at broker number 1, this partition number 1 is located at another broker, broker 2, and partition 2 is located at the last broker number 3. Topic C has in this example only single partition, partition 0, and it is located only on single broker. Also on this diagram you see one more topic, topic D, that has two partitions, partition 0 and partition 1, that are located both on one broker, broker 0. It is also possible. Also you are able to create the topics with hundreds of different partitions that will be spread among multiple brokers. But what is an idea behind creation of those partitions? Why don't just uh, create a topic with just single partition as shown here in this example? Because, as you know, every message is written to the file and file is stored on a hard drive of every computer. And if there will be a lot of messages that are produced simultaneously by many producers, single computer will be able simply to write such amount of data quickly to the hard drive. That's why if there will be multiple partitions spread among different computers, they will perform write operations of messages much, much more quicker. Same relates to read operations. If there are many consumers and uh, if, for example, 1000 consumers will try to read data from topic C partition 0, this broker may simply go down due to lack of resources. But uh, if uh, this topic will have, for example, 100 of partitions spread among different brokers, this job of supplying data to consumers will be much, much easier. That is the reason for creation of different partitions that uh, are created basically on different brokers. Also, it makes topic fault tolerant. And in this example, if for example broker 0 will fail, topic A will still be present on broker 1. And it will still accept new messages and accept uh, new read requests from consumers. That's uh, why partitions are needed. Also, in this diagram I have shown you this topic D on purpose in order to make you understand that uh, multiple partitions in the same topic may exist on the same broker. It is possible. Ok, let's proceed and next uh, let me explain you how messages are spread among different partitions when they are produced by producers. So, see you next. Bye.